morning. This is the Eco Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids. Welcome to season three and episode of number 202 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Wednesday, September 6, 2023. And according to the Weather Network, it's going to be an excruciatingly hot day here again at the Beaver Lodge with temperatures feeling like 36. I'm your host, the eager beaver, pronouns he, him, he, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always is my dear friend, Mr. Grizzly. As you can hear in my voice, I am totally unenthusiastic because once again, I have lost control of my damn show. Um, so Technical I'm sorry. Difficulties. That, uh, and I'm sorry that yesterday everybody heard me yell um, the F word really out loud, but it's okay. The volume just cranked right up again. I don't know how that happened. Um <sighs> There's some sort of gremlin in your system. Okay, We're gonna I, figure I, it out. I can't do this again. Sorry. I just, That's okay. That's I can't okay. hear anything. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, technical glitches. I don't know what's going on. These things do happen sometimes. And for some reason, there's, his system has gone a little haywire. I will have to uh, run down to Kingston to make this uh, better. Go down there and get it all figured out. It's, uh, it's what I do. I, I take care of tech when I can, and sometimes I have to do it on site because it's not always capable of being controlled remotely. Um, <laughs> that might not be a terrible idea. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that might not be a terrible idea. We might have to upgrade to computer system. Uh, I think, yeah, we're going to have to do that. It looks like it because uh, we're trying to install new software and new equipment, and it's just not cooperating. So um, looks like I'm going to have to run to Kingston uh, tomorrow, by the sounds of things, to uh, get things figured out. We hopefully we can get it all straightened out later today and get it functional because it was working. We did a we did a full test last night uh, around uh, I guess nine fifteen p.m. Uh, we did a full test. He jumped on had camera, had sound, everything was framed up and looking good and looking great and sounding good. And then this morning, nothing worked. So I, I don't, I don't know what the cause is. If I knew what the cause was, I'd fix it. And because I don't know what it is, it's just very frustrating. Um, Darlene, you're in camera. <laughs> I don't know where they are, baby. I know we'll find them. Everything's gone sideways this morning, as you folks can see. Um, 
No, this is this is not a YouTube issue. It seems to be a, a browser issue with Mr. Beaver's computer because it's not uh, when he, when he launches Restream in Chrome, it does not give him the option to turn his camera on, which we do not understand it, it, why that's taking place. Now I did upgrade some software and we plugged in a new mic, but that shouldn't be the issue. I don't know what the cause is. I will figure it out because one has nothing to do with the other and that microphone has nothing to do with the camera. So why the camera isn't working, I I can't understand. But I'll get it figured out between today and tomorrow. Um, maybe I'll install a new video card in his computer. And I, uh, I uh, yes, maybe a new video card, maybe a new um, USB card. I'll figure it out. It just, it might take a little bit. Because when we did, I did a couple of tests on Sunday and it worked fine. And we didn't get the chance to do a full, full fledged test. And then, of course, you saw what happened yesterday. And then last night, we did a full, full blown test, 915, checked it out, framed up, sounded great. Everything was working. And then it went sideways this morning. So this is where we are right now. And I, I, we apologize. You know, we, we always want to give you the best show. And I know that Mr. Beaver is very frustrated with this right now because of the fact that this is the biggest news story of the year when it comes to politics. And he's upset because he can't contribute. But uh, Mr. Beaver, if you're still watching, uh, you can connect on your phone. Uh, you could connect through your phone and, and have a discussion that way. And maybe you could read off your, um, read off your computer just because you can do it through your phone like I've done on occasion when I've had to go mobile. So that's a suggestion. Or if you have a tablet handy, we could do it that way. And you could use your computer to uh, to uh, glean the information that we want to give you. Anyway, nevertheless, it's, it's up to you, sir, if you're still watching. I don't know. I know you're very, very frustrated right now. Believe me, I understand. Uh, I feel the same way too. Uh, and if uh, I'm frustrated because... Uh, I can't fix it remotely at this current moment in time. And that just troubles me because it's IT support. It's what I do, right? So, all right. I, uh, I don't know what to tell you, folks. It's, it, we are in a very strange time frame. I mean, I don't know if anybody happened to watch that uh, joke of a press conference yesterday. It was pretty pathetic where Doug Ford tried to weasel his way out of, well, everything. And I think he, he um, well, I think he was pretty pathetic in it, in, in his attempts to do so. Trying to act like everything was all normal and everything is fine and nobody did anything wrong when, when well, we know that just really isn't the case now, is it? Case in point. You know, it starts off with Dougie saying, uh, this is the right team. You know, most of these ministers have been completely incompetent and or corrupt. Of course, Doug goes on to say how Minister Calandra had been hard at work. Ontario is on track to deliver four hours of resident care per day with thousands of new nurses. Well, the thing about Doug's uh, statement when it comes to that is that uh, most of uh, most of those releases are, are, are things like enrollments or registrations versus actual functioning bodies doing personal support work. So he's just spewing more garbage. And he says, Steve Clark's decision to step away couldn't have been easy, but it demonstrates his integrity. Actually... No, it doesn't. Resigning because the integrity commissioner says you broke integrity rules shows integrity? Like, seriously, that doesn't even compute. Now, he says, goes on to say in this press conference again, I'm just going to review it for you here. He says, when, when the previous government created the Green Belt, they mandated that we review it at least every 10 years. For the sake of accuracy, the legislation says every 10 years, not at least every 10 years. So, you know, he says he asked his new minister of municipal affairs and housing to launch this review. Um, so the Greenbelt car votes weren't actually an official review. So he's doing a, a review twice in 10 months, not once every 10 years. <sighs> He went on to say he wanted to reevaluate the remaining land swap sites. 
these will have to survive on their own merit. Well, here's the thing, Dougie. The Auditor General already stated that only two out of 15 sites met the original criteria to be selected for development. When we started putting the Ajax lands back into the Greenbelt, we made it clear that we don't have tolerance for anyone who does anything that doesn't support building homes quickly. Well, here's the thing about that, Douglas. Durham's planner said Duffin's Rouge land could take 25 years to get ready. Durham's chief planner estimated it will take as many as 25 years to have full service for housing development on the Duffin's Rouge Agricultural Preserve, which accounts for 58% of the land acres removed from the Greenbelt in 2022. The facilitator will ensure that landowners pay for community infrastructure like parks, schools, community centers, hospitals. Here's the thing, though. He cut the development fees that pay for these things. There's no way to know how they will be funded or what amounts will be funded towards that. I, uh... Exasperated all the damn time. It's, it's his statement here. This review will speak to the people locked out of the dream of home ownership. Newcomers struggling to find a place to live. Young families not able to buy their starter home. <sighs> Let's be realistic. None of those people, none of that group of people will be able to afford one of these gigantic McMansions in the Greenbelt. This is just more garbage being spewed from Dougie. I just, I, literally he came on, he spoke for seven minutes, uh, barely reading from a teleprompter, as you know, as he does. And uh, yeah, I just, I just don't know what to tell you folks. I just, I don't know what to tell you. Um, so frustrating. He says, oh, the, one of the first questions asked, sorry, let me, I'm just trying to go through my notes here. Will this be a full and proper process? Doug's response to that is we will review all lands. It was mandated in 2005 to review every 10 years. In 2005, there was no consultation. That's not actually true, Douglas. There was a 15 month consultation before the Greenbelt legislation. It was a 15-month process that started off with a minister's zoning order and the original Greenbelt Protection Act. I, I just don't know uh, with this guy. He just lies so damn often. He doesn't know what else to do anymore. All he's got is lies built upon and based upon upon more lies and more lies and more lies and it's just just <sighs> I don't I don't know what to say anymore I just I'm I'm running out of superlatives to describe the mountainous cretinous lava flow of bullshit that comes out of his mouth every day I just I don't understand how he's still in office I mean, I get that somehow we were stupid enough to not vote next year, which is how he got elected, because if more people had it turned out to vote, instead of listening to what the pundits said, uh, spewing on about how they were going, that, that the progressive conservatives were going to win a landslide victory, which they ended up winning a landslide victory with 30% of the population voted. Out of the 43%, he got 30%. I... No, I think it was only 17%, actually, out of the 43, if memory serves. We just didn't get enough people to come out and vote. And as a result, we're stuck with this horrendous government. And that's just beyond frustrating. It's an exasperating, frustrating day here in the, in the Beaver Lodge. I guess we're in the bear's den today. Do grizzly bears have dens? I don't know. I know black bears do. I don't know if grizzly bears do. I should actually get, get into checking that out, eh? <laughs> it's days like this where I just don't know what to, uh, I don't know what to say. I, I want to tell you folks something. I want to tell you folks something great, but I got nothing. 
I literally got nothing. Of the 43%, he got 17%, but we have 85% of people complaining. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, he keeps talking about the 14 recommendations, right? There's 15. So he's trying to gaslight us, gaslight us into believing there's only 14 recommendations, and they followed all 14, but there's 15, and the one he followed, refused to follow, is the one that states, uh, this process is flawed, and it's incorrect, and you didn't do it right. But he wouldn't admit to that. Yeah. So 17% of the vote, and this is what we are looking at, and it's a landslide majority victory. 17% of the 43% who bothered to show up and vote last June, and this is what we have to deal with as a government. We've no one to blame but ourselves, and I mean that. We, we, we have no one to blame but ourselves because we did not get out and vote. Hey, Santi, how's it going, brother? Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks, man. I thought you'd like that. I posted a joke yesterday for those who might might uh, might not know. Um, Santi's a buddy of mine from Uruguay. Um, he's not in Uruguay right now, though. You're in the Carolinas, I believe. Anyway, uh, it's one of those days, folks, where where. Now I have to uh, wade into the water on the Freedom Convoy and, and the trial that is moving forward for uh, Tamara Leach and Chris Barber, I believe it is. is it? Yeah. yeah, organizers, Chris Barber. Was it Barber and Leach? I know it's Tamara Leach. She's in town and she's smiling at, uh, at her throng of fans that, um, I don't know. Oh, you're in Indianapolis. Okay, thanks, brother. The throng of fans uh, who... who came outside the Ottawa courthouse to show support. I think all 30 people, if there was that many, I'm not sure. Began yesterday and, um, uh, I don't know what the outcome was. Uh, there's a lot of idiocy on, on, uh, online talking about it and people trying to support it. And I'm like, what's to support? They held a city hostage for three weeks and think there's nothing wrong with that. Now, Crown Counsel uh, Radcliffe, in his opening statement, called the Freedom Convoy protest anything but peaceful and insisted the trial was not about the political beliefs of Leecher and Barber, but was focused on the means that both used to achieve their goals. Yeah, well, that's what it boils down to in the end. And we know how to deal with this in the future if it ever happens again. If they were ever able to take a city hostage again, we'll, we'll just literally bring in a bunch of police forces and kick them out. You can peacefully protest as much as you want. That was not a peaceful protest. That was an occupation. Anybody who saw me yelling at them in the streets will understand the hell that we went through for that three-week period. <sighs> Exasperated all the damn time, folks. All the damn time. I just don't know what to say right now. When I when I when I think about all the crap that we have to put up with with the Ford government, with the idiocy that is the freedom convoy, with the blatant willful ignorance of people who refuse to use the tools at their disposal, this medium that we're on, to actually go and, and search out from credible sources actual factual information, but instead we'll go down the rabbit hole of uh, places like Newsmax and One News America and Fox News and tell me not to listen to mainstream media. I'm like, well, mainstream media has dropped the ball on a lot of shit, so I'll make my own decisions on where I get my information. But there are a lot of good journalists and reporters in this country. For example, the Narwhal and, um, is, is, one of the, is one of the publications that helped uh, lift the veil that was on the Greenbelt land grab. Were it not for their efforts, we probably wouldn't know what we do right now. The Toronto Star has been very good at running uh, articles about the land grab on a daily basis. 
So there are some good mainstream media reporters out there. And yes, I take umbrage with the fact that uh, sometimes the CBC does have bias, left and right, and I don't care for that. I want unbiased news sources. It's no secret that we are progressive left, but when the left does something bad, we're going to call it out each and every time. Oh, shit. That's a terrible thing to hear, Dan. I read, I guess. I'm not hearing it, but I am reading it. I did not know about that. I don't, uh, I, I don't even know how to comment on that. Things just seem to be getting worse by the day, and I don't know. I guess yesterday, Lawrence Greenspawn, uh, who is a, a look, if you want a good, if you want a defense attorney, that's the guy to get. But he can be quite the a hole sometimes. And yesterday, he he said, um, "It's disappointing that the term occupation is being used to describe the demonstration in Ottawa. It belittles the situation of people across the world who live under a true occupation." Well. Lawrence, you live in this city, but you don't live downtown. So maybe you should have came in and visited the, the core while it was going on and saw the hell that we were living through. You saw the videos, dude. Now I get you have to protect your, your, your client. You have to defend your client to the best of your ability so you can't taint the waters by actually being exposed to what took place. But Jesus, man. He says, this whole trial, according to Greenspawn, is about protected charter rights of assembly and freedom of expression versus property rights. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lawrence. What about my freedom of expression? What about my right to assemble? When we have a bunch of bullies in the street who are yelling at people for wearing a mask because there's a deadly pandemic on, when people are getting threatened and beaten up because of it, and there are 500 um, cases of intimidation and assault that took place during that time period. 500. I don't know what to say about that. That's Where's my right to assembly? Where's my, my freedom of expression when it's taken away from me by a horde of ignorance that occupies the streets of my city for three weeks while the Premier of Ontario fiddles while the city is burning, where the mayor did nothing? And the police chief said, well, we have to let them through. No, actually, you don't. You don't have to let people in giant trucks through to the downtown core of Ottawa. You could have blocked off the streets and let them walk in. And they would be welcome to walk in. And they can walk out. But you let them park on the city streets for three weeks. Shit in my streets. Assault and threaten and intimidate my neighbors. Innocent people who had nothing to do with the mandates. Uh, neither did the Prime Minister, for that matter. The mandates were provincial. And every one of you chuckle fucks out there who want to talk to me about that one, bring it on. Because I can prove to you how wrong you are. I can't travel across the country. You drove here from Alberta. Nobody stopped your freedom of travel or movement. The methodology may have been different. Regulations were put in place to protect people. You didn't want to abide by those regulations. You didn't want to wear a mask. You didn't want to get vaccinated. Fine, that's your choice. But the thing is, every choice you make in this life, there's a consequence to that choice. Sometimes they're bad. Sometimes they're good. No matter what you do, you have to live up to the consequences of your actions. Or in some cases, inactions. It's a privilege to get on a plane or a train or a boat. It is not a right. Your freedom of movement was never taken from you. And if you said, I was locked in my home, well, I don't know where you live, but nobody locked me in my home. I was free to come and go as I pleased during that time period. So this, this trial, I hope it doesn't turn out to be a joke. And I honestly, I hope it's a fair trial. And, and again, Tamara and Chris have their right to a, a fair trial and, and to be judged by uh, a group of their peers. And I hope that, um, I hope to go to prison. I really do. No, I do. I'm not going to lie about that. I want them to go to prison because they broke the law. 
They hassled people. They did it intentionally. They wanted to overthrow the democratically elected government. Not making this up, this is a true fact. I read their MOU, I have a copy of it. They don't seem to want to have democracy. And well, that's the thing, Jen. They're whining about their oppression during an unprecedented time. We all went through the same thing. They're, I didn't get to go do this or visit my... My dad was in the hospital and almost died. I couldn't visit him. I didn't decide to occupy a city and threaten others because I didn't get to have my rights. We all are part of a community. We're supposed to take care of one another. We're not supposed to demand that our rights go above all else. You know, here's the thing. It was always all these whiny little white people, and I am a white person, obviously you can see that, who for the first time in their life discovered what it was like to have a lack of privileges. The very first time in their life. They didn't get served the way they wanted to. And they couldn't deal with it. They really couldn't deal with it. Look what they did in response. Pathetic whining babies. Every single one. I think I'm going to cut it short there, folks, so I can get into the office and get some work done. And as you all know, I don't like to do this without my partner. And it's not as much fun without him. And I know it's a very heavy tone when I'm here by myself. There's no one to joke around with. It's just me. But I thank you for coming to coming out today. I, I thank you for being patient with us while we sort through these technical issues. I know how frustrating it is for Mr. Beaver. He uh, is very upset at the moment, and I understand. We'll, we'll, we'll get this fixed up. I don't know what went sideways, but it did. And sometimes, technically speaking, that's how things go. I know I don't like it any more than you do, but but there we are. So remember to reach out to us. You can find us on our True North Eager Beaver, oh, True North Eager Beaver Media pod page at podpage.com, sponsored by the Ray Girl. And of course, if you want to donate to us, you can do so by clicking on the uh, QR code to my right. It's uh, ko-fi.com backslash Eager Beaver. And you can find us there if you want to donate. And that's great if you can. And if you can't, that's okay too. There's no pressure on you. And if you're feeling a little stressed, maybe go to my ASMR mental health, ASMR for mental health YouTube channel, Polly's World 2005, I believe is what it is. I never remember that. It's terrible. I don't even remember my own address. <laughs> I just click on it and there it is. <laughs> the QR code is on the screen for those of you who are interested. If you want to scan in, there's, I don't know, a couple hundred videos there that will help talk to you about mental health and anxiety and how to cope with moments like this when we are depressed and anxious and upset. And, you know, I think it's important that we lean on one another in times like this. We do want to thank our sponsors, the Corvid Moon Publishing, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, CanadianTarot.com, and the Peppermaster, who uh, I'm going to spice up my uh, dinner this evening. A little, a little uh, I think I'm going to use the bell peppers. It's, I got a whole bunch of sauces from the Peppermaster, so I'm going to dig into that later on this evening. Pardon? I'm going, I'm going rogue. Because <laughs> we need a laugh. Yes, we need you to laugh. To tell them that you already have dinner made that I brought you. No, I'm saying for this evening, darling. <laughs> I'm putting in the peppers for this evening. I, she, I, Bridget did bring me dinner last night. That was very kind of her. Okay, Linda said I was allowed to walk through the room. You're allowed to walk through the room. Yes, yeah, you are. go to the washroom now? Is sure, okay? go ahead. Yeah, great. yeah. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> the kind of day we're having folks all right you uh take care and we will see you tomorrow and once again i do apologize for for the technical glitches i know mr beaver is beyond frustrated and like i said I, I, if i could fix it for him right now i would unfortunately i don't know what is happening or why it's happening but we will have something functional for tomorrow everything was working last night uh i've got stuff at the office so i will log in uh to log in to this medium with him later today and get it figured out and uh, once it's figured out, I'm just going to tell them, don't disconnect, don't turn off, just just stay where you are. Because <laughs> we don't want anything to go sideways, right? 
All right, my friends, uh, I will bid you adieu for now, and we will be back again tomorrow, and, and hopefully I can have a full full functioning show for you. Um, technically speaking, I hope I can get it all together today so that we can do it for tomorrow the way we want to, the way you've been accustomed to. And you know how much we love all of you. Each and every one of you have been so very kind to us. Uh, we do read all the comments, and please don't get upset if we don't respond right away. There's a lot to sort through, a lot of email to, to parse through uh, between email, between YouTube comments, between Shorts comments, and DMs on, on the Twitter, and occasionally on Facebook as well. It's a lot to parse through, so I try and get to it as much as I can while continuing to try and produce a show for you. Okay. That's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get on out of here. I'll uh, I'll see you soon. You take care. Bye bye. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver Podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. I take off, I wanted to give you folks a footnote here. Um, interesting fact, uh, Gatineau, which is right across the river here in Ottawa, they've decided that they're going to close uh, most schools. Actually, yeah, most schools in Gatineau will be closed Tuesday because of the heat warning, because of the schools do not have any type of air conditioning. And trying to sit in the classroom when it is 38 uh, degrees, well, it's, I think the with the humidity it's going to be about 42 today, that's extremely hot. It's well above body temperature. So to, to subject children to that is absolutely abhorrent. And guess what? In Ontario, I'm blaming, I'm blaming the minister, Stephen Lecce. Nope, schools aren't being closed today. They haven't given them proper ventilation and there's no air conditioning. So children have to try and sit in a classroom in 42 degree weather and study. That's just re- goddamn ridiculous. I I just, I don't, children should not have to suffer through that because suffering is what it is. All right, take care. I'll see you tomorrow.